We now continue on with our study of the Byzantine Empire. Today we'll be talking about the causes of the empire's decline. To review a little bit from the previous video on the Byzantine Empire, some things that you should remember, the very basics. One, remember that the Byzantines rose from what was the Eastern Roman Empire, the wealthier of the two quote-unquote Roman empires after they split under Emperor Diocletian. You should remember that the most important leader of the Byzantines was Emperor Justinian, and his most important accomplishment was the body of civil law that was his compendium of all Roman laws throughout history, and that is still the basis of civil law in many Western countries today. And you should remember that culturally, the primary goal of the Byzantines was to recreate the glory uh, that Rome had managed to achieve over the centuries. Today, what we're going to talk about in this video is the effect of Christianity on the Byzantine Empire has a major effect on the way it developed and its relationship with the rest of Europe. We're going to talk about the Great Schism, which is a big division in the Christian church and what caused that and what it led to. And we'll also talk about the reasons the Byzantine Empire declined and eventually fell in the year 1453. Over time, Christianity became the major religion in the East, just as it did in the Western Roman Empire. But since they were further apart and had different traditions and different values, Christianity developed in two very different ways, West from East. For example, in the Western Roman Empire, the church was led by a pope. In the East Roman Empire, it was led by someone named the Patriarch, who was appointed by the emperor of the Byzantine Empire. In the West, the priests were celibate, which meant they couldn't marry, have kids, or, as it were, have relations. Uh, in the Eastern Empire, the priests could actually marry. In the Western Church, they used Latin as the main language. Greek was used in the East because that's what most people in the Eastern Roman Empire spoke. And the holidays were different, oddly enough. Uh, and obviously, the Western church and in and, and most Christian religions today, the big holiday is Christmas, celebrating the birth of Jesus. In the Eastern Roman Empire, they tend to put a lot more focus on Easter, celebrating his resurrection from the dead. So in many different ways, as you can see, the Christian church just sort of began to grow apart as the two sides valued different things. The differences between the Western and Eastern churches became so pronounced and in many cases violent. There were actually fights back and forth over the proper way to practice Christianity. Then in the year 1054, the church officially split. It's known as the Great Schism. A schism is a division between groups that are very strongly opposed to each other. And typically it is permanent, a permanent split, which is what happened here. But they split into the Roman Catholic Church, which is what was practiced in Western Europe, and the Greek Orthodox Church in Eastern Europe. And they still were sniping back and forth, even after the schism. The Pope said, okay, you know, I declare ours to be the true Christian faith, and I excommunicate the patriarch. And the patriarch of the Eastern Church was like, well, I declare myself the head of Christianity, and I excommunicate you. So they just were, you know, going back and forth constantly. So this is a major defining moment in the history of Europe, this division of the Christian church, and it has impact down the road on how these regions evolve politically. Eventually, the same thing happens to the Byzantine Empire that pretty much happened to the Western Roman Empire. There were a lot of wars. There were arguments over who was going to be the emperor because they didn't pass down rule from father to son. There, they did, there were no dynasties. So every time an emperor died, there's this big kerfuffle over who's going to be the next one. And over time, that's going to take its toll. A lot of stronger empires emerge in Europe to sort of compete against the Byzantine Empire, as it were, for a while in terms of being you know, a big empire. The Byzantine Empire was the only game in town. There was them, then there were these other smaller groups in Western Europe. Well, We'll talk about this when we go over Middle Ages in a couple of units, but you eventually have the Holy Roman Empire, for example, that is a very, very powerful uh, kingdom that begins to rival the Byzantine Empire, and they start taking over land that the Byzantines had previously held. So whereas the Byzantine Empire for a while was huge, almost as big as the Roman Empire had been in its heyday, uh, it starts to shrink. And by the time it falls in 1453, it's actually just the size of a small country. Um, for a while, 
Constantinople, the capital of the Byzantines, was taken over by Western Christians. That happened during the Crusades when a bunch of uh, Christian warriors, as it were, came from Western Europe to take the Holy Land back from the Muslims. And we're going to talk a lot more about that after we talk about Islam and, and go through the Middle Ages. But just know that the Western Christians came in, they plundered, they really destroyed Constantinople and took it over for a period of time even. Um, the, the death blow happens in 1453 when the Byzantine Empire is uh, uh, taken over in the city of Constantinople, uh, the capital that had been the capital for over a thousand years, uh, fell to the Ottomans, which was a Muslim uh, kingdom in what is now modern-day Turkey in, in Eastern Europe. And they completely took that area over the Hagia Sophia. You may remember from the video yesterday, we talked about that as being this big, magnificent uh, building that Justinian had constructed in Constantinople. There's a picture of it there. It changed from being a Greek Orthodox church to being a mosque, which is a Muslim house of worship in the Islamic faith. Um, when they took over Constantinople, they changed it into a mosque. Now it's a museum. But the Byzantine Empire was very, very important. It was, it was very big, very powerful. But as you can see, over time, it weakens and weakens and weakens to the point where it finally falls apart. It didn't happen suddenly. It was a slow, miserable, painful death that the Byzantine Empire suffered. You heard me mention Islam several times over the course of this video. That's going to be what we cover next because it's so important to Eastern Europe and to the Middle East, which is where the Byzantine Empire was located. So over the next couple of uh, days in class, we're going to talk about the history of Islam, why it was founded, you know, where it was founded, all of that, how it spread throughout the known world at that time, and their achievements in terms of culture, science, mathematics, and, and things like that. As always, ask your teachers if you have any questions, and thanks for listening. Cheers.